What we're talking about today is thinking from strategy to being a strategist, whether that's for your own business or somebody else's business. I want you to start thinking of yourself as a strategist because winging it's just not going to work anymore. And I think most of us know that. Let's be honest, in 2020, 2019, even into a bit of 2021, we could wing it a bit. We could kind of just do things and they made money. I remember those days. They were fun. But we know, I think, that that's changed and that things are feeling harder for some people. Generally, the people that are finding it more difficult to make money more easily at the moment are the people that didn't have a strategy in place in the first place. And I'm not judging you for that because I think that unless you come from a background of strategy like I do, you don't necessarily think to do that at the beginning. What you do is you just start doing things. You fall into something. You start doing things. You maybe start doing what other people are doing. And when you do that, you might get some results. So you think, well, this is good. I'm just going to carry on and do this. And you get some more results. And then you can plateau massively. Or when things get tougher, like in, you know, a cost of living crisis, an economic climate like we have at the moment, then it can sort of go backwards. And you can start earning less than you did before. And it's really frustrating. And you don't know why. The strategy is why. I promise you that is it. Um, There's no big secret that I'm going to tell you, by the way. Anyone that's seen me talk on a stage will tell you, I always tell you the truth. There is no big secret that those of us that are making millions of pounds know that you don't know, that we're all hiding from you. It's nothing to do with that. It is just about having a strategy and being really visible. And they're the two things that I do really well. So let's let's do this. And um, sorry if I don't see you chat while you're chatting. Please feel free to continue to chat. I, I don't mind. I won't look at it. Um, but at the end, if you want questions, like as we're going through, write down your questions so that at the end I can answer those questions because I won't see them um, as they're going through. So I'll do. I'll go answer your questions now. Ask your questions now, and you can put them all on, and then we can do it from there. Right. Okay. So welcome. This is me. My name is Lisa, and these days I run a multi seven figure business. I'm really transparent about what I earn in this business. We make around four million pounds, about, I don't know what it is these days, five and a half million dollars each year in this business. And I started my business six years ago. I worked less hours than I did in nine to five, which I like. My nine to five was all based around strategy, by the way. Um, And I get lots of time to travel the world with my 11 year old twins, which is why I was in Crete last week and I'm in Iceland this week. Um, And there'll be more trips on the horizon. I've used strategy for so long, like in everything I do. So when I worked in an investment bank during the crash in 2008, I was a strategist. I was a risk analyst. So I was analyzing businesses all the time. That was my job. And so when I came into you know, running my first offline business, which was a wedding business, and then running this multi-million dollar online business based on ethical sales, I used strategy again. I just naturally use it because of what I used to do in my job. And I noticed when I was in this kind of arena that people weren't using it and I wasn't really sure why but I think it's because if you're not taught it or if you didn't do it in corporate you probably don't even think about it when you come into an online business and it's the difference between I always talk about having a a CEO thinking mindset and that some people make money really easily like I have clients that so easily make six seven figures and then I have other clients that really struggle And I think the difference is a CEO mindset. And the biggest thing for a CEO mindset is being strategic in everything you do and having an actual strategy in your business. Um, And so that's what I've done. So life wasn't always this way, like loads of you. I grew up living in a council house, single parent family, started working at 16 years old, no qualifications, an office junior, worked my way up to be an analyst in the banking world. In the corporate role is where I really learned how strategy can help, especially during a cost of living crisis or a recession, because that's when I worked there. It meant that by the time I was teaching others about business, I could see the gaps really quickly. I didn't even know that that was going to be my superpower, by the way. (laughs) Like when I started teaching other people about business, 
I had no idea that I had this knowledge that other people didn't have where I could look at someone's business when they were at A and they wanted to get to B and I could just see like, well, these are the gaps. It's obvious because of the strategy. And, you know, people were making money and not making enough profit. And I was like, well, here's how you make more profit. And I could just see how to do it. And it's meant that we've made 15 million in my business over the past five years because of that, because of that strategy and me being able to see the gaps really quickly. And I didn't realize really until probably year three that not everyone could do that, could see it. And, I, and then I realized that I could teach people how to because I was taught it um, in corporate. So it wasn't something that other people couldn't do, but my life wasn't always this way. In fact, seven years ago, I was 30,000 pounds in debt struggling with four-year-old twins. So things can turn around if you're in a position where you're like, oh my God, i would never be able to make six figures, seven figures or whatever it is that you want. And by the way, I don't believe that success is six figures, seven figures. Success is whatever success is to you. But if one of your versions of success is making a lot of money, then I'm the person to help you with that. So why is strategy important right now? We know that 2023 and 2024 are going to be the make or break years for lots of businesses. They know it too. Those businesses know it. Some of the tactics that worked previously just don't work in a low economic climate. Winging it has got businesses so far, but the market's changed so much over the past 18 to 24 months, especially the online market. Businesses have realized they now need real business strategy, which is, I think is a good thing. So I'm going to teach you how to do that. And as a thank you for staying to the end of the presentation, at the end of the presentation, I'm going to give you our strategy checklist. This checklist is what we use when we look at our own strategy and we have strategy days with ourselves, which I do with my team all the time. Or when we're helping others with a strategy, we have a checklist. I'm giving you the version of that um, that's going to help you. And I will give it to you at the end. I won't just tell you to sign up for it. I'm not going to ask you to sign up for anything. We're going to put the PDF in the chat as a file so you can just take it there and then um, because I want you to have a strategy as well. So are you ready to get going? Should we just do this? I know strategy can be or sound a bit complicated, but I promise it doesn't have to be. Right, let's do this. Now, first of all, the good news the fact that businesses are starting to realize they need a strategy right now more than they ever have in this online world before is brilliant for you because you have some opportunities here to do one of three things. One, start taking your business seriously by implementing strategy in your own business. And that means your business will do great and start making a lot of money. Or you can start working as a business strategist to satisfy this massive new demand that is in the current marketplace. You know, you can basically become me. I need more of me because I get asked every single day, can you help me with my strategy? And I say no every single day because I don't work one-to-one -one with more than one person a month. You can imagine how many people want me to help them right now. And I say no. And when I say no, I say, but I do have a lovely little directory online of people that I have taught strategy to. So you can work as a strategist and make money that way. Or you can add strategy knowledge to a business that you already have to create more value. So for instance, if you're a Facebook ads manager or anything else that helps businesses, branding person, then if you also know about strategy, you can help that business more. Whether you're doing their branding or their Facebook ads or copywriting or anything else, tech VA, you can help the business if you understand strategy and you can really add value to people. And we really want that. We want more people to be adding strategy value because then it causes a ripple effect. If more people start talking about strategy and showing online businesses how to really do it, that's amazing and so helpful because there's so many people that don't do strategy and that kind of ran away from it because it sounded too corporate and it scared them. So we don't want people to think like that anymore. We want people to know that now is a great financial opportunity if you're here in business right now. So why are so many online businesses using strategy incorrectly? Because they are trying to use it. Like, not judging, they're trying and they're not seeing the results they want 
And yet they're working with some good coaches out there. I know some of these good coaches. The reason is this, the current myth around online strategy is that it's how you market your business. This is why everybody seems to be failing in this area. That's not business strategy. That's a marketing plan. That's it. When people, I've been on many of these courses, by the way, these certification courses, and they teach you marketing strategy. That's this big. It's a tiny bit of your overall strategy, your overall business strategy, just a small percentage. For a strategy to really work and create this long-term business model that we want, we have to go much deeper than let's work out your marketing strategy. When people come to my house, I have these intimate um, strategy days at my house, and I have something called sales and strategy, which is a uh, day that me and Charlie Day put on. I'm not talking about whole business strategy in that. I'm just talking about marketing strategy because it's one day. Like I can't teach strategy in that time because it's much bigger. It's why most strategy certifications that you see online aren't cutting it because all they're doing is teaching you marketing. It's why having a coach to help you with your business doesn't really work unless you both understand the whole business strategy that you're following. It's no good if a coach doesn't know your strategy, because how do they know what you're working towards and what the plan is? And the plan is really important because without a plan, what are you doing? You just hope it might. So I hear this a lot. I don't want to be corporate. I was trying to get away from corporate. I do get it. Like, I don't really want to be corporate either. Um, we start businesses because we don't want to be in corporate. We don't want that whole environment. A lot of us got shafted when we were in that environment, me included, and I totally get it. If you've read my book, you'll have read about my boss and what he was like to me. And so corporate did scare me. But that doesn't mean the practices that corporates have been using for years don't work. They worked well enough to grow these massive businesses. And so small offline businesses use strategy really successfully, but online businesses can also use it. It doesn't matter how small, we can use the same thing. It's all transferable with some online tweaks. Once you understand strategy, you can help online businesses, offline businesses, corporate businesses. It's all the same thing. It's just that we've not used it online because we go, oh, it's too corporate. But we have to stop thinking like that because it's what's stopping us. It's not, it's not what we need. Like we need to not go back into corporate. We can just take some bits from corporate and use it in online businesses so that we can be real businesses. I think a lot of us just play at it and we don't need to be playing at it. We can do this properly. So today I'm going to show you the seven main parts, there are a few more, but I want to show you the main bits because I know that I've only got less than now with you. The seven main parts of a true business strategy, not marketing strategy, that you need to be looking at whether this is your business that you're going to do this for. Maybe you're helping someone else with the issues in their business, maybe some clients of yours. You will need these seven parts of a business strategy. Just looking outside and they're not there yet, <laughs> just in case. Okay, let's go. I'm also going to show you my PDE strategy model. This is a model that I made up um, that I use in my own strategy. And when I'm looking at the gaps in my client businesses, it's made it easier for me to put kind of corporate strategy into place in the online world. I'm going to also show you at the end a way that you can become a CPD accredited strategist, properly certified by a regulatory body to help other businesses and have this ripple effect on a new generation of successful online businesses. And it doesn't matter whether you're, you have a different type of business and you just want to add to your skills. It doesn't matter whether you're doing it for yourself or whether you just want to pivot completely and become a strategist. You can do that too. And I'm going to show you how. So. Just checking the chat, making sure you're okay and you're following along. Yeah, you are good. Right. I want you to have a business and a life that you love. I don't want you to be doing a business wishing you'd never given up a nine to five or knowing you can never give up a nine to five because it's not giving you the freedom that you want. It's not the right business model for you and it's not working. I want that to turn around, like it's turn around for me. You can help yourself to do this, but more importantly, I want you to help others to do this using my strategy models. So what actually is a strategy? Because we hear the word all the time and 
you know, you can be forgiven for not actually knowing what I mean when I talk about strategy because no one ever really explains that bit. All it is, is it combines the plans that the business has, whether you're one person or 50 people, you still have plans the business has and the action that the business needs to create the results the business owner wants. So if we work backwards, you've got some stuff that the owner wants, you've got a plan to get there and some actions that you have to do in that plan to get to the result. That sounds pretty simple, right? That's what a strategy is in its most simplistic form. Obviously, there is more to it, but that's basically what it is. And you can see why you need that, because if you have none of those parts, if you don't know what you want, you don't know what result you want the business to get, you don't know what the plan is to get there, you don't know what actions you need to take, how are you going to get there? Like, it won't, you won't be able to. So we need to do this bit. So I use something called a PDE method. This is planning developing and then executing so the plan of what what you want to do developing the idea you know like padding it out and then actually doing it executing it so if we look at my little map here we use pde across all the different things that you're going to have to do in your strategy all the different pillars. So if we look at the seven pillars that I'm going to talk about at the bottom here, in every single one of those, whether it's business and market research, sales, scaling, marketing, you know, anything, planning, in all of that, we're still going to use planning, developing, and then executing. It makes it much easier to do because you know what you're doing in each of the pillars. You're using it throughout all of them. We're going to kind of explain how as we go along. So every successful business that you know, that you've ever seen uses this method in some way. Starts with a narrative or, or a strategy model, which is like what the business stands for, how it operates, who it will be known as. That's kind of like the model. And then it's planned, developed and executed well. And I think every business uses this. And that's why I've kind of formed it as my way of doing things. Because when I look at every business, whether it's Apple to, uh, you know, the smallest business, if they're doing well, this includes, by the way, spiritual businesses and businesses that say they're, they kind of do lazy marketing, they don't really have any kind of strategy and they're winging it. When you actually look at what they're doing, they know what they're doing. <laughs> and, and the planning the development and the execution is still happening in all of these pillars, just in a different way. It means there's an ecosystem. All these things work together. You can't just have marketing if you don't know what everything else is doing in the business. You can't just have sales if you don't know what everything else is doing in the business. It's an ecosystem that works together. Seven parts of it, all using what we'll call the eighth part, which is PDE, planning, development, and execution at the core of each of these seven parts. That's the most complicated it gets. So don't worry. Um, all right, let's go through those seven, seven parts. Get your pen out and your piece of paper. Here we go. So the first one is choosing and developing a business plan and a strategy model. So your business plan starts with your business values and behaviors. Your business plan will have things in it like your vision and mission. The checklist will have this on at the end, by the way. Um, the most important part of a business plan, yes, there's a, more to it than this, but I believe the most important part of it is your vision, your mission, your values, and your behaviors. These aren't the same as your own values necessarily. They might be, but just because you're a personal brand doesn't mean everything to do with you is the same as the business. The business must have its own values because otherwise it's reliant on you. Remember that we're trying to get a business that's sustainable, that can last without you in it eventually. That can't happen if every value is tied to your beliefs. And yet we're taught constantly in the online world that you're a personal brand. You are your business. You are not your business. You definitely shouldn't be your business because that means that if something happens to you, 
your business can't continue and that's not sustainable. So when you're thinking about values, for instance, one of my biggest values is integrity, is ethics, is transparency and honesty. You've heard me talking about this a million times. It's my biggest value because this online world has got so much bullshit in it that it needs to be someone's biggest value. And so it became mine. However, if you look at the values of my business, it isn't in there because it's a given with business that should have integrity. My values of the business are things like, we are risk-taking pioneers is our first value in that strategy code. We are risk-taking pioneers. I'm not necessarily a risk-taking pioneer, You won't see me doing massively risky things, but the business is, you know, you won't see me doing a bungee jump or any of those kinds. I'm not very risky in that way, but my business is. The business has a different value than me. We have fun and freedom as our second. We believe in fun and freedom. Me as a person, some might say I'm not the most fun person. I'm not the girl doing karaoke at 2 a.m., But my business believes in that. And the people that work for it believe in that. If I was to disappear, this business can continue because it has its own set of values. If I was to sell this business, the business still has those values without me in it. So it starts there. The business plan starts with your business values and behaviors, not yours, your businesses values and behaviors and making sure that they're not just yours it has to be sustainable and then you choose a model like what business model you want to do so my model at the moment I have different parts different income streams with different models but my main model right now is an online training center I also have another model which is launching My third model is passive income. So there's like three different things, but there's lots of different models out there um, that we talk about actually in in the certification. But you have to start with develop your business plan and your strategy model. And when people say business plan, people are like, oh my God, this is what banks ask for when you're trying to get like funding. I don't mean that kind of business plan. I don't want I don't think you need a 50 page boring thing written up with forecasting on it. That's not what I mean. It's about a business plan of what this business is, the core of what it's about. So that if you were going to hire somebody, they would very quickly understand what this business is about, where you're trying to get to, what the plan is. Okay. Number two. The PPTP process is the second pillar of your strategy. This is where we go into the four things that makes any business, offline, online, corporate, doesn't matter, operate well. When we're doing these, a little part of you in your head is going to go, online businesses don't need this. It's so different. But if you look at the online businesses, you know, they all do this and they all talk about this too. Um, process the process in which your business is going to do things the product what are you selling products the team and if there's only one of you you will eventually need a team so you still need to think about this part and the profit because it's not just about revenue you've got to have high profit you don't have to have high profit all the time there will be some years where you dip into profit to grow last year was one of ours because we were investing so much in the business, but you have to look at profit. You have to look at all four parts. These four elements are crucial. And often they're completely overlooked in the planning stages, which should be before a business even starts. So for instance, if a business comes to me and says, I need help with my strategy, I'm not making the money I wanna make. First thing I will do is go and look at this and go, tell me your process product team and your profit. And if those elements aren't there, I'll go, right, you're going to have to go back to foundations, back to the beginning. Because if you don't have these things and that business plan that we talked about in number one, how can you possibly do anything else? Like these are the the real foundations and they're overlooked so many times and we put them in and then suddenly the businesses start making money because there's a clarity over where a business is going. And you have to do this even if there's just one of you because the business isn't just you. 
So you still have to have this in place. So think about those four things, the process of how you do things, the product, the team, and the profit. The third part is the business and marketing research. So this is where marketing comes into it. This is normally the only bit that strategists teach online is just this bit and it can't work with just this bit but it is important because this stage of any business helps generate leads which is what you need for any business you need leads coming in all the time so that you've got a pipeline of selling whatever whether you're launching a big course or whether you're selling one-to-one or a product you still need leads constantly identifying opportunities and weaknesses in your business plan qualifying those leads to make sure they are right for your business. We don't have to work with everybody. We shouldn't be working with everybody that wants to work with us, even though we want to, because then we get more money. It's not a good thing for long-term sustainability. You take on a client that you know you shouldn't really be working with because you haven't you know, qualified them, then you're going to hate working with them and you're going to hate your life. And we don't want that. And we've all had that client that they text and you're like, oh God, why did I take this client on? I had a feeling I shouldn't. It's because we haven't qualified the leads. And it impacts your positioning. Remember, your positioning is what people see when they look at you in the marketplace. Where are you positioned? Are you positioned as like the known person in your market? You don't have to just be that. Are you positioned as somebody that does things on a really good budget? Are you positioned as mid-tier? Are you positioned as luxury? Are you positioned as doing things differently to everyone else? When we research, we can work out where we need to position ourselves by looking at what other people are doing, looking at the opportunities and the weaknesses. This is missed out. Doing actual research on a business is missed out of almost every single strategy I see online businesses have. And yet, The thing that makes the biggest impact on your money that's going into your bank account is leads and audience. And this is how you get leads and audience. And yet no one can be bothered to do the work, to do the actual research of business and marketing. And then they're like, oh, I don't have any audience. Why don't you? You didn't do the research. You didn't do what you needed to do to make sure you stand out in a very noisy marketplace. All marketplaces are noisy now. So you've got to do this part of it. Number four is growth analysis. So this is where we look at external focus. So far, we've been looking internally. How do we want to position ourselves? What are the opportunities for us internally? The team, the processes, the plan, the business model is all internal. Now we're going to look external to be able to grow. So these are external factors that's going to influence your business because we can do as much as we can do internally, but we know that there are things outside of our control that's going to affect our business. So we do things like a PESL analysis and a SWOT analysis. Now, people don't like doing this bit because for some reason in the online business world, we get comparisonitis. You don't see this offline, but online, it's like, oh my God, everybody's doing better than me. And they're not at all. It's just that we see a part, a highlight reel of other people's businesses. Because of that, we we say things like, we need to stay in our own lane and not look at what anybody else is doing. That is really bad for business. (laughs) Because how can you possibly see where the gaps are if you're not looking at what your competitors are doing? This doesn't mean you're going to look at competitors in a bad way. My competitors are my best friends. It doesn't mean that you have to be like, oh, she's not doing this, so we'll do that better. It doesn't mean that, but you have to understand the market. This is the part that helps you become the CEO of your business, whether it's solopreneur business or a small business. It's the part that takes you from an employee, which is what most people in business are. They call themselves a CEO, but really they're a paid employee of their own business. This takes you from being that to being a CEO. You're looking externally at things. It helps you make the right decisions for your business. It will help you know what to do with it at each stage because there's different seasons in businesses, yeah? We've got like new business, startup phase to growth to scaling. 
And it helps you prioritize what business activities, what actions in the business you should be doing around a marketing plan, which you should definitely have. Marketing plan is part of the whole strategy because you've looked externally at other competitors and at the market in general. So for instance, at the minute, you would be looking at the cost of living crisis. You would be looking at the economy. You would be looking at where that's going to go in the next year. There's lots of white papers on this. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I tell you where I'm predicting things are going pretty much all the time um, because of my knowledge in economics. And so if you are looking at the economy, especially in your specific niche, because it's different in different niches, then you can predict what you need to do. And the reason that my clients are doing so well at the moment, even though everybody's kind of going, oh, things aren't selling anymore, is because we predicted a year ago in each of their niches what was going to happen and what people would need. And we started to put things in place ready for now. And that's what you need to be doing all the time. And yet what I see most people doing is not looking at their growth analysis. What they're looking at is right now. How can I make money right now? How can I make money in the next month? What do I need to sell in the next two months? You should be looking a year from now if you want a sustainable business. You should be concentrating on that. Yes, we need to do some stuff right now to bring in money. So we need present action, forward focus. Present action, going to do some stuff now. Forward focus, while in the background, doing some other stuff for some big stuff that's going to happen in a year. So a year ago, yes, I was launching. I was still doing my two million pound launches. That was my present action. But underneath for the last year, we've been setting up that strategy co. It's taken over a year. That was my forward focus because I could see where the market was going. I could see that it needed something different. And so I was going to give it what it needed at the time. So the growth analysis is where marketing comes in. It's really, really important. Do not skip it. Number five is building the business. So this part of the strategy looks at who you need to help you. So let's say you do a strategy day and you're like, I want to do this, 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 and this. These are things that I want the business to do in the next year. And then you will see some gaps. And it might be, oh, I need someone to show me how to do this. It might be a knowledge gap. Or it might be, well, we haven't got anyone that can do that piece of work. That will be a resource, a staff gap. You know, someone you need to take on, someone you need to recruit. It might be uh, some other kind of gap. But it basically is looking strategically about, how to recruit without wasting money or making mistakes. Where I see this falling down a lot is when people hire coaches or they go into masterminds without a focus. So they are, oh, my business isn't working, I'm going to hire a coach. What they haven't done is looked at their strategy and gone, okay, so here's what I, where I want to get to. The reason that I'm not getting there is because I don't know how to do sales. So you should go into a mastermind or a program for sales, not just get a coach who might know nothing about sales. Or it might be that you don't know how to do evergreen and you've realized you need some evergreen in your business rather than it just being launching. In which case you go into a, a mastermind that concentrates on business models or you go and seek out a course or a coach that specializes in that thing. But where people waste a lot of money is putting money into just learning without knowing what they need to learn because they haven't strategically sat down and thought about where they're going to go. So you need to look at the training you're going to need. You're going to need to look at what your company needs, staff, outsourcing, the strengths of your business. And again, as with each of these different pillars, you're going to use the PDE model to do it right. And this is the same if you're doing this for other businesses. So if a business comes to you and says, look, I don't, you know, like I've got this strategy. I don't know. I've, I've worked with three coaches already. You'll hear this a lot when people come to you. I've worked with three coaches and it's not really moved on my business. And what you'd need to do as a strategist at that point, if you're helping people, even if it's just part of how you're helping people, if you're, if you do something else, if you're a coach or if you are a copywriter, but you want to help people with strategy as well, then you'd need to go and look at this part and say, when you've written down your strategy, your marketing plan, what gaps did you see? 
And if they say, well, we haven't done that, that's where you're going to come in to your own because you're going to be able to go, well, let's do that. Let's sit down and let's look at where you want to go so we can see where the knowledge and the resource gaps actually are. And once you plug those gaps for them, they will fly and you will have helped them do it. So we really want you to be doing that kind of thing. And you will fly in your own business if you plug those gaps as well. And you can use the PDE model to do it. Remember, plan, develop, execute. We do this for each of the different parts. So here, you'd be going, plan, let's look at the strategy. Develop, where are the gaps? How can we now fill those gaps? That's your development. Execute, go do it. Go fill the gaps. Number six is sales. You will not be surprised to know that sales is a very important part of the business because it's how you make your money and you don't have a business if it's not making money. And so sales is really, really important. So successful sales planning, not just hoping that people want to buy your stuff. It just doesn't work that way. Remember that we will build it and they will come. That is a lie. That is not what happens. You need a sales strategy. So all of these are like mini strategies that go into a big strategy and the sales strategy is part of that. So this is about planning and executing a sales plan. It's the art of selling strategically and planning on how to make sure those sales come in. This has got lost in online business because many people just look at what everybody else is doing and copy them. Like everyone's using, I don't know, threads. They're not, are they? Everyone's using LinkedIn. Everyone's doing this. This is how people are selling now. People are doing reels. And they don't really know why they're doing it. They're just copying what everyone else is doing. And that's because they're following someone else's strategy rather than their own. And it doesn't work. And they're like, well, it worked for that person. That person was selling this way. They were doing ladders. They were saying, I'm looking for five people who all want to earn six figures in the next 90 days. And they made money doing that. But when I did it, it didn't work. And that's because you need your own strategy so that it all fits together. The sales strategy needs to fit with your overall business strategy. That plan that we just talked about, the processes, the gaps, the sales are going to only come into it when you know what they are. It all has to fit together. And you know, it often doesn't when you're, when you're following someone else's strategy. It's why if you go to a coach and they say, well, do, this is how you do it. This is how it worked in my business. And they tell you exactly what to do. That's their strategy. That won't work for your business unless it fits into your complete strategy. And if you haven't written what that strategy and that plan is, you won't know if the sales are going to work in that way. And it's why people say, well, that blueprint worked for them, but it didn't work for me. Well, of course it didn't because it fit into their strategy, not yours. You need help with your own strategy so that the sales will work for you. Um, in the certification that I'll talk to you about in a bit, we talk about different strategies for products, services, logistics, marketing messages, operations, that all comes into sales. So make a note, in case you don't come into the program, you need to be looking at logistics, marketing messages and operations when it comes to sales. They're your three biggest things. Okay, number seven is about scaling and expanding the business or exiting. Not everybody wants to expand a business. Some people want to create a business that is then a really good business that's making money and then sell it and start all over again. Some people love doing that. That's what their businesses are all about. That's their business model, if you like. And that would be part of their plan right at the beginning. When they write it out, they'll know that they want to exit. So before we can scale, you have to look at the business culture, the team needed to scale, because you can't scale on your own, creating team engagement. This is more about team than anything else when you're looking at scaling. And then you're going to look at the three stages of business. Startup stage. So what team is needed for that? What team engagement? What's the business culture like? Growth stage, where it will change. And then expansion or exiting, whichever you decide to do at that point in your business, that season of your business. Your strategy is going to be different for each of these three stages. 
You can use the PDE model for all three stages, but you will rewrite your strategy at each of these three stages. So we're on expansion at the moment. So we've gone through in the past five years, the startup stage and the growth stage. And you will have seen my team grow, the business culture change, the team engagement change. Some people left because they were great for startup stage and for growth stage, but they weren't right for expansion. So you have to have the right team in place for all of these three different things, but you'll only know that when you write the whole strategy. So scaling or expanding or exiting, if that's what you want to do, is really important. Now, I do have a plan to eventually exit. That's my 10 year. In 10 years time, I want to exit. So because we're at the expansion stage, you would have seen me change the name of the business. My name is no longer on the business because at exit stage, the strategy is different. You're not looking at short-term gains anymore. You're looking at much longer-term gains. So as you can see, having a real business strategy is much more complex and in-depth than just how you're going to market your business, which is just one bit, number four of those things. So it's worth it because it's what's going to separate the businesses you see online that have huge profits and those that struggle to get traction is what I'm teaching you tonight. And I've been inside many, many six, seven and eight figure businesses, like over 6,000 businesses now. And I've seen the difference between those people that have a real strategy and those people that have a marketing strategy. They are completely different things. Most of what you see online is just marketing. The last bit for me is about using integrity and ethics in your strategy, because I believe a strategy with integrity is the key to my multi-million dollar success. I think it's because of integrity. We all know that there are hundreds of ways you can make millions of pounds. There are a million gurus out there shouting about different ways to do it. You can pick any one of them and it will probably work, but it won't work sustainably long term if you don't find a strategy that is aligned with your life, your priorities, what you believe in. You'll always feel unfulfilled, even when you're making money. It will impact your sales if you're not totally in love with your business. People can feel it. People can feel it when you're desperate. People can feel it when you're not in alignment. People can feel it if you know you're being sleazy. And they can feel it if you're just winging it too. And so being in integrity is the best way to make money. I want to tell you about a few people that put this into action um, because it's not just my business. So this is Carol. Um, I worked with Carol on her strategy, like whole strategy. Um, in the first hour, she said, Lisa took my ideas in under an hour, formulated them into a new business strategy for an online business, which would make me more money without a massive team or working more hours. After asking questions, she outlined exactly what to do, individual steps, sequence, and the challenges I'd face. I followed what she said to the letter and launched an online business I absolutely love. She's a business strategy genius. You've seen Carol online. If you haven't, go and follow her. She is now huge for people that are selling to corporates, entrepreneurs that are selling into corporates. And all I've seen is her grow and grow and grow. And she still has the same strategy that we worked on. And I've seen her do that. Um, you may also know Kim Rain. So Kim, we had a, a strategy which happened in a different way. She was on a retreat and Kim was doing something completely different. And I could see holes. I could see the gaps in her strategy. She did have one, but there were gaps. And so we sat on a beach in LA, in Santa Monica, with my mastermind, and I told her a new strategy. I was able to see the gaps and the skills she could bring. And I told her what a new strategy was. And her business has rocketed since then. Her audience has grown effortlessly. Book sold over 1,300 copies in the first three months. She easily crossed over six figures, which is what she'd been wanting to do for some time. She's now going to end the year on 175,000. Um, it, it was all strategy. That was the only bit that she didn't have in place. So you need a strategy for the marketing of your business. You need a strategy for the delivery and the sales, whatever your business does. Your strategy has to incorporate those three things. And so do your clients. If you have clients coming to you to help with their businesses, they need to be doing this as well. Otherwise, anything you do isn't really going to help them long term, will only help them in the short term. If you're a copywriter, 
you're going to be able to help a launch in the short term. But if you also know strategy, you're going to be able to help them long term. You can't just wing your pricing or promotional plan and hope it works. Not anymore. You could in 2020. By having a clear step-by-step strategy, you'll be able to sell your offers with confidence. And by understanding strategy, you'll clearly see the parts other businesses are not implementing well, and you will be able to help them plug their gaps and start making profits. Now, I don't want you to miss a step or any important detail in strategy and jeopardize your chance of building a business that gives you the freedom and the income. My one goal in 2024 is for more online businesses to succeed in a low economic market using real strategy and bringing it online, real strategy, because I believe we can create a ripple effect and change lots of people's lives. So I told you I'd give you a way that you can do this. Um, And the way you can do this is by becoming a certified online business strategist. It's CPD accredited. I worked on this program for a year, and this is the last time that I am going to be delivering this live. I'm never doing it live again. This will be the last time because I've changed my business model so that there's less of me in it. But this is going to be the one that I do. So it's a CPD accredited live program to not only teach you my business strategy methods in detail, all the stuff I just went through in a lot of detail. And it is a lot. I'm not going to pretend this is an easy program because lots of the people who came into this last time said it was the most, the hardest program they've ever studied for. But they also said it was so worth it and it wasn't like anything else that they'd done before. It'll also certify you as a business strategist if you pass the exam so that you can take on clients and help them with their own business issues, which is so needed right now. More people than ever before are asking for strategists. There is a gap in the market for you guys to become strategists. So you get tailored support over eight weeks. I'll be there live to teach you every single element so that you become clear on the strategy techniques you can use and you get familiar with how to use the PDE method. There's going to be time for questions at the end of every single session. You get weekly workbooks to help cement your learning because you need to remember it. You need to nearly memorize it. You will have checklists and other things. We give you templates but to help other businesses, but you need to like become slightly obsessed with it so that when you're looking at another business, you can go can see what's missing. You'll be able to do it really quickly at the end. Um, It will help you with your own business too, but it will also help other businesses that you work with. You get a private client group so we can support you in between when there are questions and learnings with the rest of the group. There is a CPD case study and exam. At the end of your training, you'll be guided through how to write a case study to show that you can implement your learning with other businesses. Um, Is it easy? No. I only want the best strategists out there, and especially if you're going to be on my directory. I only want people on there that can do this job really well. Um, But it will give you experience of implementing real life business. You'll also take a small exam. These will be marked by our qualified assessor. And on passing, you will get a certified CPD accredited business strategist um, accreditation. And you'll be able to market yourself as such. Um, At That Strategy Co, we already have now a directory of accredited strategists who did it last time that passed. So that business owners who come to us for referrals, we can just give them the directory and um, they can hire you from there because they'll know that you were trained to really high standards. Um, another testimonial from Anna. Anna was drawn to me because of her in- because of integrity. She believes in integrity as much as I do. Um, she's put, Lisa helped me hugely with the strategy to grow my business and see a clear path forward and what felt like so many opportunities in different conflicting directions. She's brilliant at getting straight to the point of what needs doing, spotting the gaps in business and giving straight talking advice. And her business has gone from strength to strength. She's amazing. So... Let's up-level you in 2023, get accredited, add real value to your business that will give you the credibility to succeed in 2024. And it is about credibility. We all know that businesses without accreditation are going to be looked at differently in 2024. So the investment is £240 a month for 12 months or a single payment of 2,500. This includes the CPD certification. You don't pay extra for it, it's included in the cost. We've added a small admin charge each month for the payment plan option, Um, but 
we have decided because we were giving 10% off everything else in that strategy co that we're going to give you an early bird bonus of 10% off both of these prices. If you buy before 10 PM tomorrow, you need to use a coupon to do it, which is CBS 10 when at the checkout CBS 10, it doesn't matter if you're paying over the 12 month payment, you can still use it and still get 10% off the prices if you book before tomorrow at 10 p.m., we thought we'd put a little early bird in there for you. Now, if you do pay in full, we've got an extra special thing for you. We always ask people, people always say to us, can we have a pay in full bonus to make us pay in full? Um, so I've given you one. So I showed everybody in a call I was doing two weeks ago, the KPI and metrics tracker that I use in my business with my team. It's like, 10 pages long, and it shows different things like email open rates and how to work out all the different parts of a business so that you can track your metrics all the time and know like your social media and your revenue and all of that kind of thing. We've made you a template KPI metrics tracker, and there's a whole thing on how to use it so that you can be tracking your own metrics all the time. If you get, if you want to pay in full, you will get that. You will get our tracker as part of it. That tracker is worth so much money because there's no one else using it like we do to make millions in the business. So you get everything you need to become an accredited business strategist, eight weekly live training sessions, Q&As, weekly workbooks, case study support and marking, the exam and the certification and a private community for support. Now, somebody asked me what the value is of the certification. Businesses pay from a thousand pounds to 50,000 pounds for business strategy support. So you don't need one client most of the time to make your investment back. And the people that did this last time, most of them have made their money back plus a load more because so many people need strategists right now. So, you know, if we're looking at the value of it, you could like 10 times your money with your first client, depending if you want to help corporates, you want to help bigger businesses, you want to help online businesses, offline businesses, you can specialize wherever you want to. You can also specialize just in a part. I had somebody in my last cohort that specializes just in the business plan, just in the mission, vision, and value. And they're making a lot of money doing that. Uh, Ruth said, I signed my first paying client as a strategist while still doing the course, which covered the entire investment with enough for a nice treat for me afterwards. So even while she was still doing it, she was able to start using the knowledge. Um, we sent out a survey because we've only done this course once before. We sent out a survey, 100% of the participants that sent back replies to our survey said they would recommend it to a friend. One said it was more in depth than the course you did at university. It is not an easy qualification. This isn't something that you're going to be able to do and tick a box. There are too many certifications out there when it comes to strategy that aren't real. They're just a box ticking exercise. No one really knows how to then do the work afterwards. This is going to be in-depth enough that you can work in corporate with it. You can actually go and work with corporates as a freelancer and charge a day rate. It's that in-depth. So to join our final live cohort, start getting paid, helping other businesses, whatever it is that you do, you can still add strategy certification to the value of what you do, no matter what you do now, whether you're a coach, copywriter, branding person, anything, you can become part of the ripple effect of integrity-based businesses. I will answer your questions in a second. Um, this is where you go, certifiedbusinessstrategist.co. Remember that coupon if you're going to buy before 10 o'clock tomorrow, CBS 10. And I will now answer your questions. Let me stop sharing. Oh, there's lots of messages here. Um, what percentage of the last cohort passed the exam? Karen probably knows this more than me. From the top of my head, I think it was around somewhere between the 70 and 80% mark. Um, the PDF apparently has already been posted. Is the cost of the program the same amount in US dollars? Um, the price does include VAT. It is the, whatever the conversion is at the moment in US dollars. 
Why is it the last live cohort? Because I am not going to be taking up my time doing live cohorts anymore. We're going to record it. And the next time it will just be, people will just be able to buy it recorded, which means they won't be able to ask questions um, from me. But, you know, I want to do one last one because I want my directory to have enough strategists on it that there's something for everybody. That's the only reason I'm doing another live cohort. Otherwise, I'll just do it recorded now. Um, but I want that directory to be gold. Uh, can you repost the PDF? This is probably going to be easier for someone to ask me the questions. And you around. Because they're going so quickly. Oh, I can't hear you. I think you're on mute. Ah, here we go. When does it start? That's a big question. So it starts in, I think, two weeks' time. They're on Mondays, the, the actual calls. 20th but, of November. Say again, Shelley. 20th of November. At 20th of November. 3 p.m. GMT. Do not worry if you can't watch live, but what I will say is this is not a course to buy. You do get lifetime access, but this is not really a course to buy and sit on. Um, you want to be catching up quickly, if you, like maybe the next day or the day after, because when you get to that case study and exam, there's going to be a calf date. You, you know, you're going to need to, to do it relatively quickly afterwards, but you don't have to watch it live. Each session will be around an hour to 90 minutes, depending on how many questions there are. Will there be any guidance and support on finding new clients if we don't want to use it as a business strategy certification? Yeah, there's actually an entire module that we added as a bonus module last time about marketing yourself as a strategist. And we will put that in again. Is it's there an average amount of time per day that they should set aside to study? There isn't. I mean, what I would do and what I told people to do last time is find someone, find a business that wants help with strategy and for free, do what we're doing each week on their business, because it's going to just make it easier for you if you do it in real life, do it in real time. What are your tips to know what is going to happen in one year or how can you see where the market is going? By looking at trends. So everything is cyclical in business. So every time there's any kind of economic crisis, for instance, as soon as it starts, go look back at the last time there was an economic crisis and see what happens. So things generally happen in cycles, usually around every three to four years, but it's been a bit longer this time. So for instance, I can tell you right now from just my knowledge of looking at the economy that when people find things difficult as they are right now with launching, what they do is they pivot. They pivot too quickly. So everybody that's been doing courses who are finding it harder right now because they haven't got a real strategy are all going to say that actually they love one-to-one. -one. They always loved one-to-one. -one. I don't know why they bothered in the first place doing courses or passive income because they always wanted to do one-to-one -one and that that's what they're going to do in the future. They're only doing that because courses are harder. One-to-one -one is easier right now. But we need to be really careful with saying that because I give it till July, August 2024 when courses are going to become really popular again and all those people that said they're never doing courses again are going to go oh god now I need to do courses again so you need to just be careful what you're using is your messaging in your marketing because everything is cyclical you can see it happening two years ago I could see today and I can always see in the future things might change a little bit like for instance I thought that we would be a bit further along in recession territory by now. I'm about three months out. So things can be a bit different, but all of you have the power when you're a strategist to study the market and see what's really happening. It's not, it's no big secret. It's not rocket science. It's just knowing what to look at. Is this course very specific to online business or can it be transferred to offline businesses too? Any business, corporate businesses, you can go into and help them, offline businesses, online businesses. It doesn't matter the size of the business. Every type of business needs a strategy, 
a proper business strategy, a real business strategy, not just marketing. Will they still get the CPD aspect if it's not a live version? Yes. It would just be harder to get because you won't be able to, be able to guide you as much. I think we've answered some of the core, core key questions. The PDF will post again. If, um, if you can't um, see the PDF, we are trying to attach it. If you can't, we'll make sure that you get it. Don't worry, we'll, we'll get it over to you. Um, is this course relevant to all different areas of business? For example, I'd like to specialize in the health business arena. Yes, it doesn't matter what type of business or what you specialize in, but it will be really good for you if you do specialize in something, because then when you're on the director, it can be this is particularly for I'm a strategist for health businesses. And they're more likely to go to you then than someone that is a strategy for a different type of business. Like I'm a strategist mainly for online businesses that specialize in, in passive income. But. I can use the same strategy for everything because it's no, it's the same, but it's good for you to specialize because it just niches you down a bit. If you fail the, I saw somebody say, what if you fail the exam? You do get two chances, but we're not allowed to give you more than two. So, and it's within a time frame. Now, the good thing about the exam is you can do it in your own time. It's not like you all sit down and you have to get it done in an hour you've got as much time as you want until the, the cutoff date to do it from when we finish the course. Yes, it's a simple pass or fail. And there's a, I think it's, uh, you have to pass, Karen knows this information, but on the top of my head, I think it's 70%. You have to get a pass mark of 70. 70%, yeah, and a thousand, about a thousand words in the case study. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between this course and OTM? Oh yeah, chalk and cheese. So OTM, one to many, is just a blueprint of how to make passive income online. It's not a, it's not a course about strategy at all. It is one type of strategy for one business model. So it's the strategy that we use for the business model of passive income courses, memberships. Um, this is all strategy for all business. This is harder than one to many. I'm just going to tell you the truth. <laughs> it's a bit tough. Um, what do we have in place if somebody has dyslexia or visual impairment for the exam? Ange, that's one for you, I think. I think we've got captions. We've got all sorts of different things that we do these days. Thanks to Ange. Yeah, absolutely. Which, however you need it, however best you learn, we will accommodate. And most of our things we have all ready to go we can send to you straight away so um never worry we will definitely have a solution everything yeah. we create has those things in mind um when we're creating them will this course become evergreen so that anyone can purchase this at a later date yeah it is going to it i don't know whether it will be the same price but i think it probably will um it just won't be live it will be evergreen and you will still have a time frame of which you have to do the exam do you need to be good with numbers and accounting as well to do this course? I'm not good with numbers or accounting. <laughs> no, but you might need to know people that are good with numbers or accounting to be able to do this course, <laughs> like I do. Um, no, but it, it isn't really about that. It's not about. It's it's much more about the the depth of what the business does rather than working out figures. Is this the best way to work with you, Lisa, if they're looking to implement a strategy into their business? Yes, this is the most in-depth thing I do when it comes to strategy. What, like if you work with me on the sales and strategy day or like strategy to come to my, when you come to my house, I've got a few uh, places that I do that on. That's marketing strategy only because it's a day. So we cover like number four. This is all of it. Could you do this course and then offer it as a paid service if you don't have a background in coaching? Is it credible enough? Yeah, it's more credible than coaching. Yeah, it's CPD accredited. Um, so, you know, corporate businesses view it as credible as well. And what support is there available throughout the course? There's lots of different support. So we have a Facebook group where you can ask any question. Um, in there and my my whole team is in there so you can get support there 
You can get uh, support on the live Q and A's as well. You can ask questions on there. We give you things like uh, examples of things so that you can see what things look like or could look like, although you're all different. So you can do it all a bit differently. So yeah, there's a lot of support. That's why I'm doing it live again, because there isn't really that support when it's recorded, because I can't give you that support when it's recorded because there's no Q and A's. Do you think this course is good for somebody just starting out? Yeah, if you want to be a strategist, it's the perfect program if you're just starting out. Um, so it's good for people that either want to become a strategist and do what I do, and that's going to be their core focus. It's good for people that have another focus. They have a business already and they just want to add more value. You can imagine that if someone is going to someone that does, I don't know, branding or Facebook ads, and they have a choice to work with somebody that's also a qualified accredited strategist, then that person becomes more valuable. And so you stand out more and you can charge more. And it's good as well if you just want to use it for your own strategy. But I will tell you that the people that came in last time that said they were just going to use it for their own strategy are now helping other people with their strategy and getting paid for it. So it'll be up to you. Um, Should we do one more last question? Um, Cheeky asks, what are you going to be covering on the Sales and Strategy Day in London in December? What am I covering? Is there going to be any of this? Yeah, uh, It's going to be a tiny bit of this. It's going to be number four. We'll be doing all the marketing side of things on the Sales and Strategy Day. It'll be fun. If you don't want to be a business strategist, you don't have to become a business strategist to do this. You can either use it for your own business or you can use it in addition to the business you already have to make yourself more valuable. But some people might decide afterwards that they want to become business strategists and that's okay too. And you can still go on the directory if you want to, if you pass. Okay. If you've got more questions, then you can um, message us. So you can just message us at support at lisajohnson.com or you can DM me and I will tell you the truth. Um, Somebody has put that they can't afford the program, but uh, they would like to put themselves forward for a case study. We, it's too difficult for us to do that because we ask people to go and find their own case studies of a business they know a little bit. Um, but maybe you know someone that does do it. Is this better than OTM for growing established online business? It's just different. It's not better than. It depends if you are helping people with their strategy and you want to get your own strategy sorted, or you want to make passive income in your business. They're just very, very different things. Uh, <laughs> Northern Lights. I don't think they have. I'll take pictures and put them on Instagram if they do. There was yesterday. I hope that you've enjoyed this, even if you decide not to come into the program. It's really worth you understanding how important strategy is going to be in the next couple of years. It's really, really important. It's not going to be a nice to have anymore. It's going to be needed. So whether you learn from someone else, me, go to different classes, however you do it, please do talk about strategy and make sure you have your own in place. Um, and start reading books around strategy as well, because it's going to be the, the biggest thing that changes your business. It really will. Go get yourself a glass of wine. Thanks, I will. When is OTM open? That opens at the end of February, beginning of March for next year. Um, apologies if this has been mentioned. Is this a course for implementing strategy into your own business or a course for you to be a strategist? Both. You can do both. So, yeah, some people use it for one, some people use it for both. Um, you could find a client to pay your... £250 per month to be your first client while you learn and fund the course. Yeah, that's one way of doing it. Um, and you could get somebody to pay lower than your normal amount. And you can say it's because it's a beta and because you're studying and you're doing it as a case study. Some people did charge for their case studies and that's okay. You can use your own business for the case study. Lots of people do. Um, I don't think this is for me right now, but it's been so helpful. Good, good, good. I'm really pleased. Good, good. I'm just checking that there's no other really important questions. You signed up. Amazing. 
brilliant course. Do it if you can. Highly recommend it, says Sammy. Um, we're probably going to be interviewing a few people that did it last time because we just had such amazing results. Of all the programs I do, OTM has been the program that gets me the best results. And it's been like that for five years. And then suddenly we did this and we got really good results from this one, like really good results, insane results. So we're going to be interviewing some people about the results they got. We never have like... This isn't like one to many where you have like a thousand people join that it's just not going to be like that because it's more in depth and not everybody will be able to give it their attention. Um, but so it's smaller groups. And because of that, we were able to really get some amazing results from people last time. Uh, yes, I do. Have, I have a shop of my recommended books on Amazon. Is there another link to the PDF? I think there's one on here somewhere. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Are there limited spaces? There aren't because we don't really need to. You just don't get that many people that want to, to do a course this in depth. All right, I'm going to leave you to it. If you have more questions, just DM me. I'm here. I'll be on a plane for a number of hours soon. And so I'll be able to answer all your questions. Remember, if you want the pay in full bonus of the KPI metrics, that's there for the whole week. If you want 10% off, that's there till tomorrow at 10 p.m., however you're paying. Um, so, yeah, any questions, ask me. And I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you all around on the Internet. But thank you for staying here till the end. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you soon.